Fantastic. Oh, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming to this session. I'm going to be quick here because we're starting a, bit, a little bit late. But uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Matt Campbell, the Executive Director and Chief Digital Architect in the Digital Services Office for BC. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce Rejean Bourgo, who is the public service sector country leader for Amazon Web Services. He brings 30 years of global technology industry expertise. He consults in government, nonprofit, healthcare, and education institutions that are eager to achieve digital transformations. So very relevant for us based on what we heard this morning. Uh, he's regularly called on to speak to share his vision for what's happening in these sectors and how Canada and the world can benefit for them. He's held executive positions in Paris and Hong Kong when working for Nortel. So please join me in welcoming him to the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate it. So what a great town. Thank you very much for having me here today. It's very exciting. I love this part of town. Uh, just to uh, back to Alex, um, my friend, uh, comment about Turk and Keiko. So I did win there once. That was 10 years ago. I was not at Amazon, and my kids were below 12, so they didn't have to pay. So that's why we went there. <laughs> I, so just to give you a perspective. Uh, the minister made some interesting comment when she said it's not just about IT. And that's exactly the challenge of cloud. Cloud really works well, and the, the journey to cloud with pupil and skills and change of culture. One of our key um, uh, tools we're using with customer, for example, is to do cloud simulation journey. We did one recently in Winnipeg. We had 50 people in the room from the organization. We don't do those journey unless we have the commitment of the CIO of getting every single entity part of it, including CFO, HR, procurement, and so on. So we have everybody around the table to do a game, a cloud simulation journey, and at the end, they realize the impact. So today, we're going to talk about the culture of innovation at Amazon, something I really love to talk about. We're going to cover about 20 minutes of culture of Amazon, which AWS, of course, is part of Amazon. And then we're going to pivot to AWS uh, and talk more about what we can do in terms of enable IDs. You heard a lot of talking today about cloud and the importance of it, but also what cloud is, is we're giving you and your employees and your colleagues tools to innovate. Um, we don't believe in so server agar anymore. So we believe all technology that you have today and on-prem, you, you can have it in cloud. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, you have about 2,500 servers in your uh, data center. It probably takes five, six years to get those servers up and running over time and iteration, software upgrade. When, you, when your employee or when you come to our training, we show you that you can set up the same kind of environment in one hour, basically on our AWS management console. So we'll talk about that. So just so uh, I'm going to mimic a little bit like uh, Alex did. So how many of you, just raise your hand, how many of you use Netflix? All right. How many of you are prime member of Amazon? How many of you ever go to McDonald's and you use the digital kiosk to order meals? How many of you went to the airport in Vancouver, cross-border, and used these new kiosks, Border Express? Well, thank you very much. You are all AWS customer. <laughs> Netflix run 100% of the infrastructure competing Amazon Prime Video on AWS. We have more than 300,000 kiosks at the uh, McDonald's running on AWS worldwide. And that number is probably a year ago, so it's probably even more today. All those border express kiosks at airport, uh, I'm going to probably miss some, but Vancouver, Toronto, Winnipeg, Halifax, and Montreal, five of those, plus worldwide, is done by a company called IVR Travel Innovation, part of the airport. It's a startup. They are running on AWS. So every time you go there and we take the immigration, those kiosks, you're running on AWS. This is pretty sensitive data, right? This is pretty important data. So that's run in, on AWS. So let's talk about culture of innovation. 
Amazon started with books, right? We all know that, incorporated in 1994. In 1995, we started the Amazon, really. And Amazon today, all of these innovation you see there, it's part of our culture of innovation that we bring those type of solution to you. Today, Amazon overall in 2018 revenue was 232.9 billion US. We have, as of today, 650,000 employees. Just in 2017, I don't recall 2018, we onboard 125,000 employees. For us, Vancouver, Victoria, and BC is very important. We have 1,000 employees today. We already announced another 4,000. So by 2022, we will have 5,000 employees of Amazon in this province. We have fulfillment center, we have army of software developers, and if you're downtown Vancouver, across the Taylor's Garden, there's a Canada Post there, the whole building, all those cranes you see there, there, it's the new campus of Amazon in Vancouver. We also launched in Seattle, I was there, with UBC, the first Canadian cloud innovation center, a kick. We only have eight of those on a worldwide basis. We decided to do it at UBC. What we will do with this over a period of three years, we will focus on health and wellness. We will use the power of cloud to help challenges from the society. So the challenge at the beginning will come from the students after from city or from citizen around the town. We will man, we will have three employees dedicated on campus. UBC will have three employees dedicated and we will launch this early in 2020 officially. We did a press release, it's there, it's public. And today you'll see, I'll make some announcement. At the same time we're having this conference, we have our Toronto Summit. Cloud is real. We have 4,500 people in Toronto today, like you, listen to AWS for a full day. We did our Ottawa Summit in October last year. We had 800 people in the room. This year, we did it in May, seven months after. We had doubled the number of people. We had 1,500 people in Ottawa alone just for the cloud. So this is real. So all of these technology you see there, those innovation, the, the foundation is internet. So understanding our uh, culture innovation is pretty important. And here's why, and why I think it's important to talk about that. When you come to our EBC, either in Seattle, which is easy for you, or to Washington DC, we give our customer a list of about 100 topics they can pick up. So they go with the account manager, say, you know, for a full day or two days, here's a topic. The number one topic is understanding Amazon culture of innovation. So I'll give you a, a, a uh, 20 minutes of that today out of a one hour typical uh, pitch on that. Um, when you go there, of course, you can play with Amazon Go. We'll, we'll show you that uh, later on. Just to give you an idea, when I started three months after, my account manager said, Regin, I need you in, B, uh, in Washington. We have this customer, a very, very large fund coming in town. I had no idea, I was coming from an external company. I said, sure, I'll, I'll go there. I opened the door, it was a boardroom. We had 20 executives from one company. How many people in those 20 were IT? Only two, I was shocked. I was listening there, listening all the name introduction. I had two VP of HR, we had all the different function and only two person from IT were coming for a full day. They didn't ask for one hour, they asked for one full day just on that. So our mission is to be heard most customer a centric company. And the way we work is we, we are customer obsessed. It, it's very, very important for us and we always work backward from the customer need. And I'll explain exactly how we do that and how our customers are doing this. So how do we organize our innovation? You can read it through mechanism, architecture, culture and organization. I'll give you a mechanism that we're using and some of many, many customers are very shocked by that. We don't use PowerPoint at all. The only time we use PowerPoint or this type of medium is when we do presentation like that. We do what we call six pager and we read those six pager at the beginning of a meeting like you are in the library, totally in silence. So if it's six pager in a one hour meeting, first 25 minutes is totally in silence. Everybody read. After 25 minutes, the leader calls, say, okay, now it's time for question and we bombard the person. So this, this is great for multi control because when, for example, I review my quarter with my colleague in Brazil and Mexico, their English is not as perfect. 
So of course, if I'm presenting and I'm pretty good at doing keynote, sometimes my ranking in terms of leader, my ID would be better, not because of the content, because the way I deliver. But when we do pager like that, everybody's equal. We all read the same document, the same kind of English. So we do one pager, two pager, and six pagers. Uh, that's one of the mechanisms we're doing. Um, so let's look at the working backward. When we introduce a new solution, a new ID, we start at the get-go with a press release. So if I want to introduce a product in three years from now, I have a great ID, I will write a real press release. I will get quote from customer. I will think like a customer how I will introduce this product. Then I will do an FAQ for internal and external. After I do that, I do some visual, and I circulate this inside of the company. I have not write one line of code yet. And once I have the ID and everybody's on board, then I will do a six pager, and then we will start coding. You will not believe the power of this. We have customer now, after two, three meetings of typical engagement, First engagement, you meet the account manager, then you bring an engineer, then you bring a partner or pro-serve. Typically, after two, three meetings, I will have CIO come to me and will grab me and say, hey, by the way, I'm presenting my press release about my vision of my university, my government, to my board. Like, I'm shocked, but this is exactly what's happening, really. Okay, so that's how we work. And so Jeff Bezos talked about that. You can read the quote, but most companies write the software, they get it all working, and then they throw it to marketing and sales. We think this is the opposite. This is not the right way to do it. Uh, let's talk about the architecture. We talk a lot about DevOps, self service platform inside of AWS for all the employees inside of Amazon. We work a lot with Wiki. We have Wiki for almost everything inside. But we believe we can give the tools to all our software developer in a full self service. Sorry. And so the way we're thinking about it is. We would like you as government employees to be able to use our platform like Legos and to have full control. By the way, just so you know, because some of you are I'm waiting, I want to hear more about AWS, it's coming. Just to remove something, AWS, we have a region in Canada since December 2016. So your data at rest is always in Canada. And we have a, a route that goes from Vancouver to Montreal, the data stay in Canada. So data in transit, data address is always in Canada, just so I clear your mind about that. So the structure of DevOps at our place is very, very important. That structure, what you see there, it's a representation of Amazon.com or Amazon.ca. All of these little blocks, it's a microservices. We have a small, small team. We'll talk about the two pizza team on all of these services. And basically, that structure allowed us to make one change per second in 2009. Today, we do 50 million change per year on our software because we are agile and we have developed this. Smaller scale, I had a customer to, um, that is on stage with me next week in Quebec City. I interviewed them, small company called Coveo. They do the search engine when you go in Dell computer or Salesforce, the loop there, when you go there, it's Coveo behind it. They went from few customers to 50 million hit a day. They adopt Agile, the same kind of methodology we're doing here for Amazon.com, Amazon DC, or any other solution. They used to do a maintenance window every two Saturday between 11 p.m. and 1 o'clock, and very often Sunday morning they were still there. Today, that small company, 500 employees, they do 500 deployment per quarter. So let's talk about culture. The culture is very, very unique. Uh, I like this quote from uh, Scott Bryson. We cannot be a blockbuster government serving a Netflix citizen. So that, I think, resonates a lot about cloud and what Alex Benny was saying. One of the things we do, we hire builders. We, this is very important, and we let them build. We let them fail. Fail fast, we're talking about. We give them Legos. So we'll talk about the number of services we have, but basically we're giving a lot of tools that they can uh, early uh, and frequently experiment. So one of the things is we have 14 leadership principles. You don't need to read all of them. The first one is customer obsession. We have opt to deliver results. But the company live based on those leadership principles. We start with those leadership principles, and we're very peculiar, during the interview process. So someone interview AWS or Amazon worldwide is the same. 
phone screen one, phone screen two, then what we call a loop, it's five interview in one day. During that loop, those five interview, all we check is if the candidate match with example those leadership principles. So we really, really live by them. One of them is very, very important for the audience here, is learn and be curious. So it's very important in our interview that we validate that the employee is keen of learning. And you talk about Alex, right? Cloud is real. And what we're trying to do, and you'll see here, we're trying to give you tools to learn cloud and be able to innovate. And for that, the employee must be motivated and stop loving those servers. Um, we are willing to be misunderstood for a very long period of time. Once, once we launched the Kindle, that was about 11 years ago, we totally disrupt, disrupt our business. We were selling books, right? And the first one on the left side, left side was bulky. Some people didn't understand. It was heavy, like, and so on. But on the right side, you see the evolution after 11 years. And as you know, we're selling millions and millions of those. And uh, I was in an airplane the other day from Denver to Montreal, and I had two ladies of 75 years old, a lady and a man, sorry, the couple, and they were in their Kindle, and they say, we love this. I said, why? Because you have many books? And no, because we love the character. I can expand the character. It's so great for us. So those type of technology embedded in those. At the organization, we talk a little bit about that. We talk about two pizza team. What we mean by that is we are totally decentralize the software development. So we're pushing the software development to the edge. All those little bugs you saw, those teams have full control of developing. Our ID, those teams should not be bigger than how I can feed them with two pizza. So that's the concept of two pizza team. So when we talk with customer, there's two concepts. They always talk to us after a couple of interaction. They do their, uh, their press release, and they say, hey, I want to tell you now I'm, I'm, I'm having the concept of two pizza team also at my company what my government. We talk about the growth flywheel, so this is uh, what Jeff Bezos wrote on the napkin, but basically when you look about the selection, you have customer experience, more and more you have customer, you have more traffic, you have more sellers, and so on, you have lower prices. On AWS, for example, we allow lower our price 75 times since 2006. So when we are in procurement discussion with government, and we talked a little bit about this this morning, one of the first challenge to procurement say, you have to reset the way you do procurement. Don't ask us for fixed price in the next five years. It doesn't work. We lower our price. And we don't want contract with value. All our contract with government, like the big contract we just had with the federal government, they are zero dollar. It's basically a rubber stamp saying this cloud provider is secure. AWS is secure for my business. So we talk a lot, about, a lot about AI and machine learning. I think this is something that is not well understood. We've been doing machine learning and AI for over 20 years. When you go on Amazon.c or Amazon.com, all these selection, the recommendation on the left side, this has come from AI and machine learning. We'll talk about the other one. The last one is the, the drones. Normally I talk about the drone a little bit, but it, those, drone, those drones are real. We're doing um, experimentation in Europe and also in the US, each drone can uh, go for about 30 minutes. They can uh, wait. The weight they can take, the load is five uh, pounds. So this is real what type of thing we're doing with this. So let's talk about fulfillment center. So when you place an order on Amazon.com or Amazon.ca, the, the order is coming from those type of uh, fulfillment center. This is an old one. What I want you to pay attention is more on the back. The back door, all those rows, they look like a library. So if you go in a library, you have those shelves. This is typically, those fulfillment centers are done like that. I want, as an employee, you can work in some of those for two days just to learn. In Arizona, the fulfillment center is 1.1 million square feet. We have four rows of those shelves. This is very interesting. Every single item that are stored on those shelves are totally, totally random. So as an employee, you have a cart, we have 12 buckets, all yellow, and you basically have pieces and with a scanner, and you go in these hundreds of aisles, and you basically, if you see a hole, and you have a bottle of shampoo, you have a disc, or you have a ring, you basically find a spot, you put it there, and you scan the product, and that's it. The entire system, with cloud, we monitor where the goods are. So when we pick the items, we know exactly where it is, and you could open a drawer, and the ring is there, for example. So I've done it. So 
When you do this, you walk literally 10 to 15 kilometers per day. So we decide to innovate. We decide to bring those, um, those shelves, we're bringing them literally to the employees. So the employee doesn't have to walk anymore. Those robots, and I'll have, I'll have those robots playing now. So those robots, they weigh about 250 pounds. They can, weigh, they can lift up to 1,000 pounds. And basically, they're all crowded together, like the new library where you have to push a button. All these library move the, the, these uh, shelf. So those robots, basically, they're all conditioned, and they bring the goods to an employee. And when the employee receives all these shelves one after the other, all he has to do is to pick and send your order. By doing this, we reduce the footprint by 50%. So the same million square feet can have 50% more goods because we don't, have, we don't need to have row to go to. Okay, so Amazon Go, we talk about it. Um, when I started in 17, in January 18, we could, as, a, as an employee, go to Amazon Go. Now it's open to public. Uh, we have many Amazon Go store. The application is so simple. So if you ever go to Chicago, San Francisco, or if you go to um, Seattle, this one is Seattle. Basically, you open your apps and you go, hello, Regent. This is a QR code. All you have to do is you walk in like, like the lady there. And you walk in, you recognize. If I'm with my wife and she didn't load it, I can literally scan for her, or I can scan for my daughter. So when we walk inside, I can be the only one with the app. Basically, but the system recognizes that my wife is with me. We can split in the Amazon Go store and we can start taking goods out of it. We don't put RFID tag on it. Zero. It's all vision and, and deep learning. So we have many, many cameras on the top and we basically follow the goods, th what you're doing. What is very funny, the first time you're going to go there, you all have the same feeling. You have your goods, it's in your bag, and you don't know what to do. Like, really, can I just go out? And it's real. You go out, literally, and my daughter says it's like going in my fridge. She went there with me on the last trip for three days, and she was going in and out. And you have everything. You have fresh food there. One of the things that, it's not the reason, but in Seattle, we have 40,000 employees. There's a lot of food trucks. So if you ever go there at lunch, you'll see lots of lineup in all these food trucks like 25, 30 people waiting and waiting for the food truck. You go there you're in and out and you basically get whatever you want, fresh food and so on. Okay, Alexa, now we have Alexa for business. At St. Louis University, we have 2,200 of those. And in the dorm, in the freshman year, the student, any year in fact, you can ask Alexa, what time the, li what time the library open? And so on. I'll speed up a little bit. So AWS, was created in 2006. We understand the hyperscale computing because of Amazon.com. One of our database, and by the way, we have 14 types of database. One of our database, DynamoDB, can do a trillion event a day, right? So this is a good customer of AWS. So we said if we can do that for us, why don't we launch AWS and we serve our customer? And basically, we believe cloud is the new normal. Uh, you look today, we have millions of customers. We are six years ahead of any other CSP or, or any other cloud service provider. Um, how many of you play Fortnite? Interesting. I'm glad you wait. Uh, some people are shy. How many of you have kids play Fortnite? Ah, exactly. And some of you don't even know that your kids play Fortnite. <laughs> so there's over 200 million of those playing around the world. They are using 12 of our region. Everything on Fortnite run on AWS, worldwide basis, OK? Um, so today, we have more than 5,000 government agencies. You can read 10,000 institutions like UBC, Tabasco University, and many others. And we have over 28,000 non-for-profit organizations. Uh, we're going to skip this. A uh, number of customers in Canada. We have tens of thousands of customers in Canada today, public sector, commercial. The way our global infrastructure works, we have 22 regions. And inside of those regions, so in Canada, it's in Montreal. Inside of this region, we have multiple availability zones. In each availability zone, minimum of two, we have multiple data centers. So if you were to look over Montreal, you have two AZ today, two availability zones, with multiple data centers, separated by two milliseconds, so we can do active-active. And the, the announcement I'm making today, it was just announced in Toronto, 
We're just announcing by 2020 early, we're putting a third AZ in, in Montreal. So we will have three availability zones with multiple data center in each. Those are very, very large investment. We announced three more regions in Italy, Jakarta, and geez, uh, Africa. Um, the, the power comes from Hydro-Quebec. We have over 99% power by hydropower, so this is pretty good for um, sustainability. Um, this is a picture of what it looks like, a data center. Uh, basically, if you walk inside, which you cannot, but if you walk inside, you don't see which customer it is because it's rows and rows of, of servers, and basically the, your data is all over the place there. We never touch your data. So once your data is inside a data center, it's your data. Okay, that's very, very important. And you can encrypt, of course, your data in transit in location. Um, this is probably the most important slide. You don't have to pay attention to the detail there. A picture word, a thousand word. Many customers are confused. They think that AWS cloud is basically two services, compute and storage. It's 165 services. I started, we had 90, then 125, and last year at reInvent in Vegas, we were 165 services. Some of them are blockchain, AI ML, IoT, mobile device. We talk about database, 14 type of database and so on. So five advantage of AWS, we're not, and, and the AWS Cloud, you can read this, agility, cost savings, elasticity, um, and so on. I'll give you a good example uh, in terms of cost saving. You can read this one, September 19, the blog of Prorelator, it's just live. The CIO saving a million a year. Basically what it costs him a million for one of the application, it's down in thousands of dollars with us, with AWS. Novartis is there. It's an amazing case study of high performance computing. This one gave me goosebumps. I'll go quick on this one. The CEO went to CIO and say, I want you to test this cancer cell against 10 million compounds. I want you to do this simulation in one week. Can you do it? He came back. He said, I can do it. I need 50,000 core and I need $40 million. Basically, the CEO said, no, go back. Went to AWS. We did the same simulation, nine hours, 87,000 core, and it costs $4,232. And at the end, we find three compound positive against the cell. So that just gives you an idea of the scale of uh, the cloud. In terms, in terms of pace of innovation, last year alone, we introduced 1957 feature. That's more than feature and functionality. That's more than five a day. Okay, and in order to cope with this space, our customer needs to continue learning. So one of our customer in Quebec, for example, gave me one day, said, my team, my software developer that used to play with our drive and used to be called at night with pagers, all they do today is innovation. But I guarantee every single day, they read 45 minutes the time in the morning, your blog. After they read your blog, now they start innovating. So that's what they're doing today. They create innovation for citizens. How do I start? Read. There, there's a, this book called Ahead in the Cloud. I uh, highly recommend. There's a lot of use case. Um, you need a procurement vehicle. So on August 9, the Canada government give AWS the PBMM contract, which is very, very important. This contract basically allow unclassified up to classified level. So about 99% of every single workload of a government can now run in AWS region in Canada. So that's significant, but you need this. It takes time. So D2L that you just saw there, they are now deploying in five regions. They are in Waterloo. They are in many universities use D2L, even government, as a learning platform. It took them five years to go from two service up to 60 service. And now they are global, and they're on five regions. So it takes time, and this is where you need our help, our partner help, to get you to the journey. And we're not going to go through all these details about these applications because we talked about a few of those already. Um, if you have lots and lots of data to move, just know we have a snowmobile. And that snowmobile is 100 petabytes. So ever you want to move 100 petabytes from your data center to Montreal, we can do it. We've done it for Digital Globe for uh, basically what they are doing is the map of the world. So when you use application like Lyft, Uber, and so on, they are the map behind it. So this is Digital Globe. They move 70 petabytes. Shutterfly, 
basically some of you use this, like you put your picture on their website and you can have a picture of your family in a, on a cup or whatever. Uh, this they move 75 petabyte in the AWS cloud. Machine learning, all I want you to do is to know, remember that. We talk about data sciences. Data sciences, average salary could vary between $500,000 and $1 million for a data scientist. Most companies cannot afford data scientists. Our CEO in 2017 said, I want to give machine learning in the hands of software developers. We introduced a product in the middle called Amazon SageMaker, available in Montreal. We have more than 10,000 customers using Amazon SageMaker. Basically, that platform in the middle does the abstra abstraction of the framework. Those frameworks are very complex. And this is typically data scientists play with that. We say as a software developer, if they use SageMaker, they don't have to worry about the framework. And as I said, we have 10,000 of customers. So if you, how many of you watch F1, Formula One? How many of you uh, watch uh, football, American football, Major League Baseball? Those three, they are using AI for machine learning, uh, machine learning and AI from AWS. In the F1, now the fan experience where you know the speed of the corner, for example, you see inside powered by AWS, that is basically AI, and they are using SageMaker. They have lots of money. They could buy, buy data sense and say, so no, we're going to use SageMaker from AWS. What customers are doing in Canada? So they start small, they do proof of concept, they move to the chain, they train their employee, but then they go big workload. If you have expertise in VMware, we do VMware and AWS. Same, same skill set. So your software developer don't have to be worried. Everything they learn about VMware, it's now VMware in the cloud. The only difference, they cannot open a closet and touch it, but the rest is 100% the same. Salesforce run on AWS, contact center with Amazon Connect, SAP workload, we move a lot of SAP on AWS on a worldwide basis. Something people don't realize, 57% of Microsoft workload are on AWS cloud. We have more Microsoft workload on AWS cloud than on Azure, okay? So that gives you a, a, where we are in terms of long term. Um, what is important for us is empowering the, the next generation. We do a lot of program, AWS Educate with universities, we have both in English and French. We launched AWS DigiGov. We launched it with the Keynesian School of Public Services in Ottawa. We launched it with the Quebec government associated with Laval University. Quebec government made a bold move. They announced in February 4th, they're moving 80% of their server, of all their data center in the cloud within three years. They're shutting down 457 data center down to two. Okay, so this program will roll out based on where the, the province are moving. So if, a, you, sorry, if BC is moving to cloud, which we are hearing, we will launch AWS DigiGov, and this is a two-day program that we offer to people. Um, we have lots of training, digital training, 150 video for free, so your employee can learn on this, they can get their certification and so on. Um, today we have more than 10,000 employees in Canada. We announced more than 6,000, so by 2022, we will have 16,000 employees in Canada. Um, so what is important, we are investing in this province, we made that decision. We have a full day here called AWS Initiate Day. We are in the same place, 8 to 5.30 on November 5th. So bring your, your people there, you can register already. Uh, this is a great day for learning, totally free of course uh, for public sector. Um, reInvent, we have lots of customers. Uh, last year we had more than 50,000 customers went to reInvent in Las Vegas. Uh, basically, this is a full learning conference. We have more than 1,000 sessions just to learn. Um, and the last one, I, I didn't put the date because I got the official date in the plane. So May 6, 2020, if you come to Ottawa, we will have our third public sector summit. Uh, I'm just going to leave you on this, and based on the fact AWS is way ahead, our CEO keeps saying there is no compression algorithm for experience. Thank you very much. I don't think we'll have time for questions, so I think we will have to uh, close this, right? Okay. Thank you. Oh,